Okay, so in the previous videos, you have seen how a capacitor charges, how a capacitor discharges, and its behavior when connected to a DC power supply. A slight note, when it's connected to an alternating current power supply, the capacitor behaves differently. It is not in your syllabus. Anyway, we're going to now have to define what exactly is a capacitance. Because this is an electrical a component that we study and put in a circuit, when you think about capacitance, maybe you also want to think about how uh, generally resistor and resistance are defined. So you can see here, I put a bunch of capacitor. La. So you might be thinking, Miss, this one don't look like parallel plate one. Okay, the first one on the left, the black one, this is the more common resistor. This is the parallel plate. Miss, where is the parallel plate? Well, you imagine this plate or this plate, this one here. Um, we roll it together like a Swiss roll. You get something like this. Oh. But why do we need to roll it together? Okay, let's start one by one first. Let's just define the capacitance. But before I define it, I need to draw a symbol of a capacitance. We ain't going to draw a big, big parallel plate and slide a dielectric in the between. The symbol of a capacitor just consists of two parallel plates like this. If you don't draw carefully, uh, it will look like a battery. So this is the symbol. All right. And let us define capacitance. But before we define capacitance, do you remember the definition of resistance? Because they are similar things, we ought to define them in a similar way. So I'm just going to write here. If you remember the definition of resistance, it's the ratio of V over I. Remember, we take V divided by I. So of course, when we define capacitance, we also need to call this ratio of something. So this one would be the ratio of, but before you simply ratio something, uh, like you follow V over I, you think a bit first. These are resistance, that number, or let's say if we think about 100 ohm or 200 ohm, this number tells us how good the electronic component is at doing its job. For example, if you are a resistor and your job is to slow down the current flow, a 200 ohm resistor is better at that job than a 100 ohm resistor. Okay, so that number kind of have to make some sense to us before we simply anyhow just ratio two things. Lah. So likewise, what is the role of a capacitance? Resistance is to resist charge flow, slow down charge flow. So bigger number, better resistance. Capacitor is to separate charge. So the more charge I separate, the better I am as a capacitance. So we definitely need a ratio of charge stored. Wow, wow, wow. This one I will underline in red later. Charge stored in one single plate of a capacitor. If you just say charge stored in the capacitor, you will lose smart because it you, don't, you didn't demonstrate that you know that we are taking charges stored on one plate or you didn't demonstrate that the net charge is zero. Okay, so that's why this uh, single plate, one plate of the capacitor is important. Okay, but we are ratioing it to, ratio to the, okay, let's think about this. What causes the capacitor to store charge? The potential difference or the power supply is the one doing the work. So the easier it is for me to store charge, the less work has to be done. Hence, it will be the ratio of charge stored to the potential difference. Potential difference across the capacitor. So in other words, uh, if you want to write all of this in the equation, the capacitance symbol is C. C will be equal to Q over V. All right, and you know la, R is V over I, but we prefer V equal to I R. So C is Q over V, but we much prefer Q is equal to C. All right. Okay, so this is an important equation. And uh, since we have a new friend, new unit, so the unit for C, uh, there you see this, uh, you see this microfarad here? on the label, 1000 microfarad. So the unit for C is known as a farad. 
Name after our good friend Faraday. F. Okay. And if in case they ask you to define one Farad. Okay. One F. This will be, so basically it's the same thing all from Newton's second law until here. If you want to define one F, you will put Q as one and V as one. So this will be one coulomb per volt. That will be the definition of one farad. So when you think about farad, right, it's basically saying that um, if I have one farad capacitor, by the way, a one farad capacitor is a very, very big capacitor, okay? Normally, you see now all this number, microfarad, microfarad, is telling us, if let's say I apply one, so this 1,000 microfarad right, tells me, if I connect this to a one volt power supply, then the charge here will be equal to 1,000 microcoulomb. That's the meaning of capacitance, right? You put one volt, you get 1,000 microcoulomb. You put two volt, 2,000 microcoulomb. All right, resistor also works the same way. Okay, think about it. So since I draw parallel between the capacitance and resistor, I'm going to now talk about factors that affect the capacitance, physical factors. All right, so here... One of the factors that affects the capacitance, let's think about this. I want it to be easier to store charge. So the first factor is actually the area of the parallel plates. A larger area will make it easier to store charge. So C is actually proportional to A. Sorry, not store charge. Easier to separate the charges. Okay, so a larger area, greater capacitance less work done to displace or mobilize the charge or put the charge on the plate. Second one, plate separation. When your plates are further apart, it's harder to induce the charge of the opposite plate, meaning it's harder to have charge. So here, your C is inversely proportional to the plate separation, let's say D. Okay. And of course, what we stuff in between the parallel plate also matters. So the type of insulator. This one is represented by epsilon now. Okay, your epsilon R. But in your CIE syllabus, we will stick to vacuum. Because that is where we draw the line. So is there an equation here? Um, just for you to know. The C here will be equal to epsilon R, epsilon naught. A over D. But this is not in your syllabus. Okay? So if you think about resistor, right, just to remind you, the factors that affect your resistor includes length, L, area, cross-sectional area, A, and also the type of material which contributes to your resistivity. That's why you have your R is rho L over A. Remember old equation? So based on this R is rho L over A, right, you will see that, hey, actually, they have pretty similar identities, but very different function inside circuit. Resistor is to slow down charge flow. Capacitor is to temporarily deposit or separate the charge. You can see it as storing charge, but do not write it out, okay, because that's not what's happening. So this is the definition of a capacitance. Okay, once again, it is a ratio of charge stored on one plate to the potential difference across the capacitor. Okay, so, so that's all for this one.